Next on BYU Sports Nation, spring football perspective. How does nine wins for BYU in 2019 sound? Crazy? Why ESPN's Football Power Index may change your opinion. Is the West Coast Conference an NCAA tournament multi-bid league? And which three BYU Cougars would form the best three-on-three team ever? Let's go. This is BYU Sports Nation. Brought to you by the BYU Store. Simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Happy Wednesday, February 20th, wherever and however you're connected. Always nice to have you with us. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up with three-on-three church ball contributor, Jerem Jordan. I wish they had that. Although, when you and I were younger in this state, uh, there was round ball ruckus and hoop it up. Did you ever play in that? Oh, I played in hoop it up. It was fun. Yeah, I remember taking second one time in my division or whatever. It Just was, outside it was the Delta Center? Uh, no, I played at Salt Lake Community College in this one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that church ball and all would be more popular if they went to a three-on-three tournament format? No, it's uh, too chaotic, <laughs> and the refs stink. <laughs> Oh, we got Joe from the seventh ward here. He doesn't know anything. He can barely get up the court. No, it'd be bad. It'd be terrible. Oh, it's bad enough as it is. It's yeah. I, I actually I actually chose not to play in a church ball game Friday. I was like, eh, okay, maybe I'll play later. Business decision. I was. It was. I was busy. I said, if I'm the fifth, I'll show up. Business decision. Yeah, they had seven or eight. Listen, Steve Johnson. He works here. He went. Probably got twenty. It's all good. He also probably left with uh, a black eye and a sore ankle Iced and a pulled knee. hamstring. Yeah, yeah. Is it worth it, people? Is it worth it? I play in the mornings, you know? Just get a little run in, a little sweat in before the day. It's great. I promise you that today's show will be injury-free, and we'll try Ooh, and no make guarantees. it No guarantees. I don't know. No, it's going to be injury-free. Calling my shot. I hope so. If you're worried. Not you're not a superstitious guy. I'm a little stitious. Yeah. <laughs> Here's today's show lineup. The voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, joins us. What's been the difference from his perspective in the BYU basketball five-game win streak? And uh, what's this about the West Coast Conference potentially being a multi-bid league? We'll discuss. We'll discuss. Fifteen minutes away. And eight former Cougars playing professional rugby for the Utah Warriors. Mm -hmm. Jerry knows a thing or two about that. Their general manager, Kimball Kerr, is also a Cougar and joins us in 40 minutes with more on that. We now present today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Men's basketball currently holds a one and a half game lead over San Francisco and St. Mary's firmly in second in the West Coast Conference standings. Head coach Dave Rose says the message to the team is control what you can control. I do believe that we win both of our home games, which is San Francisco, San Diego. Then we're going to have enough wins to to get that Monday night game. So that's that's kind of the message to the guys. We control it. And so let's go see how we can do. The Cougars face San Francisco in a huge game tomorrow, 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain at the Marriott Center on BYU TV and BYU Radio. BYU dropped the first game on the hilltop against the Dons, 82-63 last month. But that was eons ago, Jerem. BYU's playing much better basketball. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Women's golf took eighth place at the Rebel Beach Invitational, climbing four spots yesterday. Rose Huang led the way for the Cougars, shooting 12 over. The men's team begins play today at the John A. Burns Intercollegiate Tournament in Hawaii. (laughs) Man, it's hard to be on the men's golf team. You play golf and you go to Hawaii. Smithers. BYU women's volleyball announced they have signed seven girls to the program for next season, including two 2018 Under Armour All-Americans in Morgan Bauer and Kate Grimmer. The rich get richer. Yeah. How was their tax break, though? And Swim and Dive begins competition at the MPSF Championships today in La Mirada, California, for the swimmers, Pasadena for the divers. Last year, the men took third. The women took fourth. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Jerem, we asked the question off the top of the show, how Mm -hmm. does nine wins sound for BYU football in 2019? Good. Yeah, that would be. I asked my daughter, how was your day? Good. A marked improvement, right? Well, some people say, no, 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 the schedule's too hard. That is crazy. We both think I think it's a little crazy. Seven and five is yeah. probably a fair total. However, in the regular season. ESPN's football power index has the Cougars a little bit higher than we thought, and some of the Cougars opponents a bit lower than we thought, Jerem. So how does looking at 
the football power index change your outlook on BYU's potential season win total? It makes me think the first four are harder than we thought. That's what it makes me think. Okay. Because let's look at uh, the first four. So Utah's 18. Tennessee is 15. There, there is an expectation of improvement because 10 starters return on offense, including the quarterback, 17 overall returning starters, a new OC. So that is pretty wild. That's the one that surprised me. USC is 27 and Washington is 17. So you're telling me BYU is going to have to take down a top 27 team at least once, maybe twice, right, to come out with some semblance of victory and success in the first four? That makes me a little nervous because – we need BYU to go at least one and three, but I'm telling you, we aren't going to feel good about it. We're going to feel bad. We need BYU to be at least two and two. The Cougars, number 44 in the FPI, they do have the luxury of playing three of those first four games in their home digs at yeah. Lavelle Edwards Stadium. So what does that mean? They get one they wouldn't have maybe? And which one is that? Is it USC? It's USC. It's hard to be like, yeah, beat USC. That would be an awesome win. We didn't see Wisconsin coming. So maybe, like, which one of those could be the Wisconsin? And let's be honest, for BYU to have a legitimate shot at winning nine games, at worst, you would think they have to go two and two in the first four. I think if BYU wins eight in the regular season, we should all go, this is good. I'm telling you right now, the minimum threshold for a good team, in my opinion, in college football, is an eight-win team. That includes the bowl game. So we need, we need one of those teams to not be a top 27 FPI team at the end of the year. And who's the most likely? I'm thinking it's USC. But the football power index says, you know what? The football power index is a nice metric, but it had BYU in the 80s last season. Cougars finished above that. If it has BYU at 44 this year, there's no guarantee that BYU will finish above that again. They could finish a little bit below that. It's, It's life. It doesn't play out like you think, right? I think seven and five is a safe expectation. You finished 60. Like they weren't crazy improved. 44 preseason is what, where they think BYU is now. And uh, f- top 40 would be nice for BYU. They like the quarterback play. not going to be play. a top 25 team when all is said and done last year. You hope, uh, sorry, next year. You hope, and that would surprise us. That'd be great. You return a quarterback, and let's be honest, a lot of eggs are in the Zach Wilson basket here. Absolutely we, they are. If Zach Wilson's not the guy, we're like, what? How's BYU going to do? What's going to happen? But because Zach Wilson is back, and because he had that game against Western Michigan, we have hope. But Western Michigan isn't on the schedule in September, so it's really going to be a challenge. Uh, and, and the Western Michigan types don't show up until late October or November. Yes, nine would be fantastic. Oh, I don't even want to talk about nine. Expect I want to talk about seven. Eight. Expect seven, and yeah. then if you get to eight, another marked improvement. Yeah. If BYU wins the bowl game to get to eight wins, that's an improvement. I, with these schedules, I think eight would be really, really awesome because post Taysom Hill and Jamal Williams, BYU's 11 and 15. Whether you okay. expect BYU to win six games in the regular season, seven, eight, nine, all of them, 14. It would certainly help the cause if they could win game number one. Countdown to the youths. 190. No one's really awkward. It is awkward. Because we need it to be four uh, syllables, we yeah. determined. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, exactly. 190. We are getting closer to March and August, for that matter. And with it, March Madness. BYU isn't in the mix for an at-large bid, really, as we discussed yesterday. Uh, but is the West Coast Conference a multi-bid league? Gonzaga's a lock, of course. One seed from ESPN's Joel Lenardi. He has St. Mary's four out and San Francisco six out. Spencer, is the West Coast Conference a multi-bid league this year? There are two ways that this league becomes a multi-bid league. Let's hear it. One of them is obvious. If a team not named Gonzaga wins the West Coast Conference tournament. That's happened once since 09. If a team not named Gonzaga wins the Gonzaga Invitational in Las Vegas. Yes. Thank you for calling it by its Christian name. I have fully embraced it, my friend. (laughs) I have fully embraced that effort. We're there to watch Gonzaga win the tournament. (laughs) That's why we go there. The women's side is more open, though, which is exciting. And BYU has enjoyed great success in Las Vegas. The second way that the West Coast Conference becomes a multi-bid league is if... San Francisco or St. Mary's finishes second in the regular season, Jerem. Uh, and so some of you are saying, well, what about BYU? Because BYU is a game and a half in second place right now. Well, you didn't watch the show yesterday if you're asking them. 
San Francisco has the best overall team sheet and resume right now. And if they beat BYU on Thursday, for the moment, that would qualify as a quadrant one victory because BYU is number 75 in the net rankings. And when you win an away game against a top 75 team, that counts as a quadrant one victory. This is a massive opportunity for San Francisco to improve their NCAA tournament resume. They already have 20 wins. They would be 21 and six if they beat BYU. And all of a sudden, yeah, those wins don't matter. That's St. Mary's last two years. That resume gets a little beefier, right? I, I think St. Mary's has a better resume, actually. Um, St. Mary's is one and six against quad ones. So at least they have one. Uh, two and one in quad two. So three and seven combined. USF is zero and four. Haven't played very many and don't have a win in quad one. Two and one in quad two. So St. Mary's has more co- quad one wins and more overall quad one and quad two games. And St. Mary's is uh, five spots ahead of net. So I, I think if there's one, I think maybe one other team gets in. I don't think three is going to happen. I think that there's going to be uh, too much carnage amongst themselves. And BYU is throwing a real uh, wrinkle into all of this. Absolutely. BYU is a detriment to the league in its pursuit of multi-bids this year. Because BYU had a poor non-conference showing. Eight and seven, didn't get any quad one wins, have played well in quad twos. But now BYU's on a tear, the second best team in the league in league play. The best thing for the league would be that San Francisco knocks off BYU. Gets a quadrant one yes. victory. Yes, that would be a good thing. But obviously, uh, what's the name of the show here? Uh, we think BYU uh, would hopefully win the game. So it's interesting to see these teams. I think maybe this is a one-bid league, which would be really weird given the narrative that the league is better. If it's better, you get another team in. That's what better is. Right? And that takes us to our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. Jaron, the West Coast Conference has three teams in the top 64 of the net ratings. In fact, they're in the top 52, my friend. Three yeah, in the yeah. top 52. Gonzaga number two, St. Mary's 47, and San Francisco right at number 52. That doesn't matter. Being in the top 40 matters, okay? If, if you're outside the top 50, you have little to no shot of an at-large. Typically in the RPI. I'm interested to see where the line is with net because it takes into account more than the stupid RPI, <laughs> which I'm really glad is gone. Really glad. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. Women's about Hoop that still RPI. uses it. Why? RPI? Women's Hoop still uses it. RIP. Yeah, get out of here. Hey. I, was, I was helping shovel dirt on that. Coffin, the last time BYU had three teams in the Ken Palm, or sorry, West Coast Conference had three teams in the top 50 of the Ken Palm, they all got in. We'll discuss this with Greg Rebell. Yeah, there's a lot, there's all kinds of metrics to look at. Yeah, ultimately, BYU is a uh, bracket uh, multi bid wrecker in the right WCC. now. It seems that's kind of a fun role, right? Hey, we ruined the multi bid league effort last year for St. Mary's. <laughs> Yes, we did. How you doing, Jack? <laughs> Jerem, we talked about three-on-three basketball. We know that you love it. And you know you've, ex- you've excelled at it. Round ball ruckus. What? Hoop it up. Runner up. If you could compile the all-time BYU basketball three-on-three team, mm-hmm. which three former Cougars in their prime are you going with to form that unbeatable trifecta? Here's why we're bringing this up. There are all-star teams of college seniors who will compete for 150000 bucks in a three-on-three tournament before the national title game. You have to be a senior. You have to have exhausted uh, <laughs> your eligibility so it's not a Super violation. Super seniors. Right? So who's, who's our BYU all-time three-on-three? Okay, I go with Kresimir Chosich, okay. the only BYU player in the Basketball Hall of Fame, six foot eleven. If you haven't heard of him, he's the best player you've never heard of. Okay? He's unbelievable. Gold medalist as well. I go with Danny Ainge, 6'5", National Player of the Year, NBA veteran, NBA All-Star. And then I go with Devin Durant. Oh! All-American, averaged 28 his senior year. So I've got the big guy, I've got the forward, I've got the guard who can, uh, who can score, who can defend, who can do it all. Chosich can do it all, too. So I, I'm, I'm looking at this team winning it all. This team is winning it all. You've got two guys that are... Well, all three really are matchup nightmares because Danny Ainge is a big guard that can shoot it from deep. He didn't play with a three-point line when he played at BYU. Had he done that, th- there would have been no player in BYU history, in my opinion, that would have beat him in points. He would still would be the all-time him. leading scorer. I, I believe that, yeah. 
All right, my all-time three-on-three BYU basketball team to go sure. and win 150 grand for the Linton Foundation. Yeah, and we get 10 percent, of course, because we organize the team. I'm with you on two of the three. Kresimir Chosich at six eleven. The dude could pass silky smooth layups around the rim. He averaged a double double. A lot of people think that if there were more footage on Kresimir Chosich available that we would maybe dub him the greatest BYU basketball player of all time. I, I think he's in the convo, yeah. Okay. Uh, who was it? Billy Packer called him the, the first, first great, great international, international star at the college level. Okay. He could have played in the NBA if he wanted to. He chose, he chose to, to go back. Yep. He chose to go back to Yugoslavia. Kresimir yep. Chosich, joined by Danny Ainge, who was <laughs> – he did it all for BYU. And then Jimmer Fredette, mm-hmm. Jerem. You need a deep threat. Okay. I can't use Danny. He, he was an NBA All Star. Uh, yeah, no, shot threes. You, you can use Danny. I just think Jimmer is such a unique talent. And oh, you don't have to justify Jimmer. Can extend you just the say range Jimmer, and then so you, you don't deeply. have to say anything else. Jimmer, I get it. Danny, and Crash. I wanted a non-Jimmer team just to mix it up because Jimmer is the obvious pick, right? Devin Durant, however, is a matchup. Twenty-eight. Nine, yeah, yeah. Twenty-eight. His senior year, like Jimmer's senior year, was twenty-eight point something. I think twenty-seven point eight for Devin. In the 80s, with no three-point line. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It's unbelievable. And he shot 54%. I think Tyler Haas would be a good three-on-three player, too. The mid-range, right? Oh, yeah. Because the, the array of shots honest, that are available for Tyler Haas. If you're playing a th- like traditional three on three is like outside with like a rickety rim that's kind of bent or whatever, you need to get to the rim or shoot a little mid range. The deep stuff. When I went on my cruise, I played in a three on three tournament. We took second, by the way. I'm not going to tell you how many teams competed, but we took second. Trying to shoot on a boat that's moving with the wind. Yeah, it was a bad shooting day. You got to get to the rim. <laughs> Who decided a three on three tournament on a cruise ship would be a good thing? I don't know, but I got crazy sunburn that day. Oh, I, good I was, grief. I, yeah, it's bad. Our question of the day, staying on this three-on-three topic, who would you put on your all-time BYU basketball three-on-three team? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. First response in from at Yazzie Brian on Instagram. Is this Brian Logan's other account? Jimmer Fredette. For the outside game, Danny Ainge for the all-around game, and Sean Bradley for the inside game. Oh, you can't go wrong with Sean Bradley, dude. 7'6", inside. Is Kresh tall Six long 11. enough to uh, be a rim protector? No one's long enough against Sean Bradley. That's true. Have you seven, seen Space Jam? It's hard to beat 7'6". Yes, it is. <laughs> Coming up, Greg Rubel joins us in studio next. Who's the MVP of the Cougars' five-game win streak? We'll ask him about his three-on-three team. And does Greg think that the West Coast Conference is a better league this year than it's ever been and could be a multi-bid league? All the tough questions for the trivia master. He's looking at the Sports Nation. He's crunching the numbers right now. (laughs) BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Tonight, 8 Eastern on BYU Radio. Get better acquainted with the Cougars past and present as Greg Rubel hosts a weekly hour of in-depth conversation. I really like this show, not just because I work here, because it's good. Tonight's guests are NFL prospects Sione Takitaki and mustache marathoner Jared Ward. Check it out tonight. Sione Takitaki continues to impress NFL scouts at all levels, most recently at the Senior Bowl. He was dubbed a better-than-we-expected player. It's good to overachieve. Yeah. Hey, he's, he has continued it's, it's to surprise people. Good life lesson, right? Expect uh, very little, and then you go, oh, wow, that was great. He's worked his way into probably sure. the most draftable position of any BYU football player Which surprised player this me. Season. I thought Corbin Kafusi would be in the number one NFL draft pick. I'm wrong. Live from Studio B, this is your day-to-day BYU sports play-by-play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan, BYUS, and on demand whenever you want it. Download the BYU Sports Nation podcast, watch the show at BYUSN.com. Our question of the day, who would you put on your all-time BYU three-on-three team? This year, college seniors who have exhausted their eligibility will compete in a three-on-three tournament before the national championship game to win $150,000 in prize money. So if you could choose... And you don't have to be from the same team, by the way. The team that won last year was like a mixed Big Ten team, I think. Any three players from BYU all-time in their prime at the Courtside NBA on Twitter says, Ainge, Jimmer, Chosich, 
That's my three. And then Yoli as a, a reserve, sub. okay? You need shooters and a guy that can re- create for themselves. Putting Bradley or Collinsworth on a three-on-three team is a bad move. Their games are meant for five-on-five. Is Sean okay. Bradley on a three-on-three team a bad idea? If it's half court, he doesn't have to move very much, right? <laughs> right? Hashtag BYUSN, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Joining us now in Studio B is the BYU Sports Nation Between the Lines trivia champion, all-around cool Canadian, Greg Rebell. Welcome, Greg. Hello, Spencer. Good to see you again. It's good to see Since you. Since our last interaction. <laughs> <laughs> I told you yesterday, and I said on the show, I thought Spencer covered. I thought you would have been favored by a certain amount, and Spencer got maybe a little closer than I thought. You know, you're, I, I, you're, I don't know what the odds makers really, really felt about that matchup. But, I'll uh, check with Vegas next time. You know, I'm just straight, I'm just straight money. Like, just win it, you know? Yeah. I don't, I don't care what the margin lose. was. Just got to yeah. win it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. Yeah. G is for Greg and for Gonzaga, right? You <laughs> and, just, you just go and, and win. not gambling. Go and win. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, start with our Twitter question today, Greg. Hmm. All-time three-on-three team BYU players in their prime. Well, I, I would lean toward yours, uh, but I want to, so, so we can have three different teams. I want to, I want to just very uh, deviate from that a little bit. I'll have to, because I, if, if I have your team, then we're the same thing. So I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll replace uh, Kresmir Chosic with Michael Smith. Uh huh. So I'll go with that. I'll go Jimmer, that Danny, shoot Michael the three. Smith. Uh, six, six ten. We know he can shoot the three. He can make his free throws. If he ha- he's going he's to shoot 88% from the free throw line. Uh, good rebounder, good assist. He really can do it all. And so, again, if you have to not include Kresimir, I'll throw Michael Smith in that mix. Yeah, it's not a bad idea to go with a first-round NBA draft pick. Never a bad And choice. I have to presume that, that Devin Durant could also have hit the three, but he didn't have really the chance. Right. Michael got to show it at least a little bit in his college career. And, and his free throw numbers, I think, if you're going to look for a tie break, Michael can knock him down every time he yeah, steps Yeah, I think people there. overlook the fact that Michael Smith was such a good outside shooter at 6'10". Right. 6'10 awesome. guy that could hit that shot and then make all of his free throws? Yeah, I'll take him. I think pre-70s, we all agree on the three, right? Go, let's Roland Minson, Roland Minson, Mel Hutchins, and Dick Namelka. Consensus, there, right? There, there's no debate. <laughs> there's no debate. There isn't. I mean, every BYU fan there believes There is. That, yes, right? everyone. Yeah. Now NIT that's champs. Roland Minson yeah, basketball. Yeah, okay, let's talk about the current BYU team. Uh, not Dick Namelka, although we love Dick. Uh, five-game win streak. Cougar. Who's the Cougar MVP of this five-game win streak right now? It's been awesome to see these guys go out and put together good road wins and win five in a row. Yeah, not to, not to uh, uh, denigrate by any stretch uh, – Yoli Child's double doubles, or the impact Gavin Baxter's had, because Gavin's first start coincides with the first win of the five-game win streak, right? Or how well McKay Canada shot the three and, and defended, or even the insertion of Nick Emery. I've got to go with T.J. Haas. Uh, he, he's the primary ball handler, has to do so much. He's got to seven or more assists in his last three games. I think right now he has the career high scoring night. He's the WCC Player of the Week. Um, he's had a couple of subpar shooting days uh, during this five game win streak, but he's found other ways to compensate. I just think for as as important as he is, as much as the ball is in his hands, he's the motor driving things right now. And and it can't be uh, uh, oh, overstated how important it is to have a guy that can knock down his free throws when it really matters. Uh, he went 19 for 20 from the stripe in these two back-to-back comeback road wins. Since it's never happened before in the Dave Rose era, back-to-back double-digit comebacks on the road, you want to look for things that would you know, help make it happen. And T.J. Haas going 19 for 20 helps. And during the five-game streak, I think he's 33 for 36 at the free throw line. Uh, that's a big deal, uh, especially when the free throws kind of threatened to maybe unravel all the good that was happening in San Diego last Thursday night. T.J. Haas made it happen there. Collectively, BYU basketball coaches, staffers, players all anticipated that the Cougars would be a good three-point shooting team. It did mm-hmm. not work that way for much of the early season, but now we're starting to see this change during league play of a good three-point shooting team. Why do you think it has changed in favor of the Cougars now once they've gotten into the WCC play? Well, you, you can't have three of the top 15 all-time three-point shooters on the roster and not expect to be good at it. I mean, T.J. Haas, Nick Emery, and Zach Selyus are all on that group. And that group uh, comprises the best freshman three-point numbers BYU's ever seen. And they're all on the same team right now. So you'd expect them to be good. If they were that good as freshmen, you'd expect progression as they go along in their career. And yeah, there were peaks and valleys. And there are reasons maybe for uh, a couple of the dips in the numbers, uh, whether health-related or absence-related. But these are three guys that are among the all-timers in that that shot so you'd hope they could do it uh you know over a long stretch of time and that's actually what's, and what's come to occur in, you throw in mckay cannon right his volume's not there but his percentage is and that's just like an, a, a welcome bonus the fact that mckay still leads the wcc in three-point percentage 
uh, in league games. And Zach's number three right now. And, and so, uh, again, they're not the volume guys necessarily, but they certainly are uh, shooting a good number. And the fact that Zach was able to go four for four uh, from three, and the last one he hits in the LMU game is the one that kind of created some distance and let BYU kind of settle in and finish that thing out. It was huge. He, he needs to go with the sleeve every game. That's my opinion. You think I, that's I, a secret? I think that was yeah. one of the secrets. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, yesterday we talked about BYU in the at-large mix. It's a way outside shot. They probably need to win the tourney. But do you feel like, and you tweeted about this yesterday, that the, the West Coast Conference could be a multi-bid league this year? Right now, Lenardi has St. Mary's San Francisco just out. Well, let's look at what's happened to the league since BYU joined it. And and since BYU's been in the league, it has the profile of a multi-bid conference. It, they, they've never not put multiple teams in when they've been a top 10 Ken Palm league. And they're number eight right now. And eight would match the highest ranking the league has ever had. And uh, the, the, the adjusted efficiency margin as a league as a total is their second is the second best since BYU's joined the league. So the profile says multiple bids. Now, the complicating factor is before the year, before going in, especially based on how everyone was doing out of conference, I thought the second-place team in the WCC is an NCAA tournament team this year because the league yeah. is that good. Yeah. Okay? But now that BYU is the second-place team, do we have to reexamine? And in a way, we kind of do because of the fact they went 8-7 and seven out of league and didn't win a road game out of league. Everything's flipped around in conference, but will it be enough? The numbers say no. Uh, BYU's never made the NCAA tournament outside the top 50 in Ken Palm. They've never missed it when they're inside the top 50. So that's kind of the cutoff line, at least for BYU it has been since Dave's been the head coach. And that's, that's MWC or WCC, 50, top 50 you're in, outside you're out. That's kind of the way it's been every mm. year. Right now they're 73. So they need some, you know, they, ha- they, they, they have some, uh, some room to make up. But let's keep in mind, they've moved up 35 spots in three weeks. Yeah, and Ken Palm told us yesterday, we messaged him, how big of a, if BYU ran the table minus Gonzaga until Tuesday, that they would be in the 50s. Yeah, it, so they wouldn't be at 50. Right, you're going to you're, you're yeah, close. Yeah. Now, be now, close. Now then, a win over Gonzaga puts you in the top 50. Let's go back to the last time BYU made the NCAA tournament. They had to beat the number three, number two team in the country in Spokane, and it really got them in. It was their right? only quad one victory of the season. It got them in. So you're looking at a similar setup. It's kind of the similar vibe, a win in Spokane on Saturday, presuming, of course, they win their home games. And all of a sudden, you're putting BYU in that, hey, this might do it. But it would take something like that, uh, beating Gonzaga here down the stretch. And now BYU becomes this sort of multi-bid wrecker, perhaps, because St. Mary's yeah, and San Francisco I... are trying to get in. But the best thing for the league would be San Francisco winning tomorrow. But BYU is trying to defend their home court. But and not good for any one of us up here. Exactly. So let's not exactly. <laughs> exactly. The name is BYU. Right. They, so, yeah. 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 But BYU's in a weird place, though. It's, it's kind of uh, fun, though, to play that role. Yeah, well, I think the, BYU, the place BYU's in is just keep, keep winning, right, and, and, and see what happens in the end. And, and if you win your home games only, you're going to be the two seed. You're going to open play on semifinal Monday Crazy. on ESPN or ESPN2 in Las Vegas. Thank you, Gonzaga. Pretty good place to be. Format. So, again, it is so funny. You know, you, you look at – and what, 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 the, what I hope the committee, too – Not again, not that I'm throwing BYU in the bubble right now because they've got a ways to go to get there. But ideally, what any coach hopes his team does and what any committee member, I think, wants to see from the teams they're looking at – are, do these teams actually get better? Are sure. they actually peaking at the right time? Yep. And BYU is kind of pacing that way, which is a great thing to see. Okay, in terms of improvement and looking at how BYU has gotten better, where do you think they have improved the most going from non-conference 8-7 and seven now into conference play at 10-3? and three? Defensively, uh, you know, I, I think the 80-point games allowed were, were becoming more than norm uh, you know, toward that you know, November, December stretch. And, and it's been the 80-point games allowed are much rarer now. Uh, BYU's winning lower-scoring games. I think the the combination of, of Gavin Baxter and McKay Cannon, you could even add Nick Emery to the mix, has given BYU a different defensive feel in that starting five. And and so that, that's where the biggest change has occurred. But the three-point number is right next to it. BYU is, in league play, the third-best three-point shooting team. Better than Gonzaga, better than St. Mary's. Okay, so, so I think those two factors combined have been the most consistent thing. But really, it is a, is a personnel thing, and it's, it's a progression thing. Uh, seeing Gavin Baxter as a starter is, has made teams alter a little bit of their game plan from first time to second time around. He is the voice of the Cougars, between the lines, trivia champion, and all-around good man, Canadian. Well, thank you. And speaking of trivia, I did stumble upon a fun fact that I tweeted out this morning about T.J. Haas. I was thinking about T.J. and how well he's played this year. Um, so so T.J. has been a consistent scorer through his entire career. Uh, it, it surprised me a little bit to find out he's only the third BYU basketball player ever to score 400 or more in his freshman, sophomore, and junior seasons. Hmm. Can you guess wow. the other two? 
I saw the tweet. Okay, so, so, I, so, so, so Jerem's recusing himself. Yes. So it's again Spencer. I saw the up with Chris yeah. <laughs> okay. What do you think? Uh, his brother Tyler. No, not one of them. Tyler, did Tyler not was score. just shy of 400 he as a freshman. He did not score 400 He was in the 390s, for... I think. Oh, yeah. good. That was Jimmer's yeah. junior. He was shooting yeah. a lot at that point. Okay, Jimmer Fredette. N- not Jimmer. Freshman Never year. Never freshman, no starts. No. He was a bench player. Ben Murdoch. Did Ben Murdoch, did ben yeah. Murdoch get 400 his freshman year? <laughs> yeah. Matt, Matt Montague and Ben Murdoch. Yeah, I don't know. That's an interesting stat. Who is I have no idea. Well, I, I think if we give you enough time, you come up with at least Sean one Bradley? Of them. Uh, Danny Ainge is one. Okay. Remember, Sean played one year. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. He's got to score three. Oh, three years. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. so Danny, of course, came in as a stud, and he was amazing. So okay. Danny Ainge is okay. one of them. And the other one I think would surprise everybody. Did it surprise you a little bit to figure out who it was? See who it was in the tweet? Remember who it was? Was it Devin Durant? <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, who was it? I... It's Mark Bigelow. Mark oh, Bigelow. Mark, Mark came in as a freshman plus. and had a ton of yeah, PT. They, they, they needed a lot good. from him. Yeah. That was really the, the, the start of the, of, of the Steve Cleveland one. Dave Rose era. But really, they were a lot on. And he was steady. He, he was 400s in each of his four years. And he and Danny are also the only two 400-plus uh, guys in all four years. TJ's so TJ got can a shot, do that right next yeah. year. Yeah. That's very cool. Wow. Yeah. Tyler 390 did not do it. Yeah. Right around 90. Yeah. If you go 390 plus, then <laughs> yeah. okay, yeah. He's the trivia champion, people. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. You bet, guys. Appreciate it, man. Coming up, is BYU's uh, football's first four opponents in the FBI a big deal or no deal? We'll debate that, plus a big jump in the month of February in the Ken Palm rankings for BYU basketball. We gave you the number just a little bit ago, but is that a big deal or no deal? This is BYU Sports Nation. Beat records. Tomorrow night, watch and listen to BYU Hoops play San Francisco and your boy Frankie Ferrari on BYU TV and BYU Radio at 9 Eastern. BYU counters with the player of the week in the league, TJ House, which, by the way, the 35 points he scored on Thursday, the most anyone has scored in league play. Nobody's top 35 in a game. How about that? He has the top two, I believe, on the whole season. WCC player of the week, well-deserved. We now present today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. BYU men's basketball. Firmly in control of second place with a game and a half lead over San Francisco and St. Mary's. A couple of teams that are hoping to crack into the NCAA the tournament. Wreckers. Greg didn't like that idea. <laughs> he didn't like the idea of it being better for the league that BYU loses tomorrow. I don't want BYU to lose. I want them to win the rest of the game. You know who else Come doesn't on. care I'm about wrecking bids? Out. I don't want it. Dave Rose does not care about wrecking bids. He wants his own bid, and he had a message for his team. This was it. I do believe that we win both of our home games, which is San Francisco, San Diego. Yep. Then we're going to have enough wins to, to get yep. that Monday night game. So right. that's that's kind of the message to the guys. We control it, and so let's go see how we can do. Control your destiny. Cougars face San Francisco tomorrow, 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain, at the Marriott Center on BYU TV and BYU Radio. BYU lost the first game on the Hilltop by 19. I hope revenge is sweet. Women's golf took eighth place in the Rebel Beach Invitational, climbing four spots yesterday. Rose Huang led the way for the Cougars, shooting 12 over. Men's team, oh, just a tough trip to Hawaii to play in the John A. Burns Intercollegiate Tournament. Good luck to those guys. It's going to be hard to overcome the elements. BYU women's volleyball has signed seven more outstanding players to the program for next season, including two 2018 Under Armour All-Americans and Morgan Bauer and Kate Grimmer. Congratulations to Heather Olmstead for a nice recruiting class. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Swim and Dive begins competition at the MPSF Championships today in La Mirada, California for the swimmers. Pasadena for the divers. Last year, maybe they'll say hello to your favorite other school, UCLA. Last year, the men took third and the women fourth. You oh, love you some Bruins. It's, all, it's only UCLA football. The most <laughs> overrated college football program of the last 20 years. It's absolutely true. <laughs> Let's play big deal, no deal. Big deal. No deal. Presented by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. Number one, Ben Bagley. Please tell me UCLA is not involved. UCLA is not. Why would UCLA, UCLA be involved? I'm just saying. I, we That's your it. favorite team, Spencer. Oh, okay. Big deal, no deal. BYU jumping 29 spots in the Ken Palm rankings in the month of February. BYU's 5-0 and in February. Uh, I think it's a big deal. It's great to climb. It's great to improve. It'd be a bigger deal if it meant that BYU was in a position to perhaps get in the NCAA tournament. But the improvement by itself is a big deal. BYU's playing good ball. This is a big deal. If BYU beats San Francisco tomorrow night, I wonder how many more spots they will jump in the month of February. But if they don't make the NCAA tournament in the end, does it matter is the question. I, I, I love improvement. I love improvement. But in the end, does it actually matter? Well, the, the because fact that making we, the NIT is a failure for this this program. It's make the tournament. The they have fact high that we are even 
discussing an outside, I'm albeit happy. minuscule, chance for BYU to make the tournament tells I'm happy, me I'm happier that it is a big deal. I'd be happy if we were in in the tourney. Oh, discussion. no question. I just can't. I Lenardi can't Anderson. honestly. I can't yeah. believe we are even discussing it at this point in the season because BYU has made such a significant jump. So I think it's a big deal. Number two. Big deal, no deal. BYU football's first four games against FPI top 28 teams. It's a big deal. Uh, BYU's going to have to knock off, you know, one or hopefully two, three, four is just insane uh, of, of those first four in Utah, Tennessee, USC, Washington. It's a big deal. Uh, it's a preseason projection. Those teams won't be uh, as good or maybe they'll be better. Like, you just, it's hard to know. But you know that they're quality. We know that all four are quality. And you're playing three or four at home. It's a big deal because BYU has three of those first four teams in the top 28 in Provo. BYU has not defended home field well over the past two seasons. It's time that they rise up and get it done. And what better way to do so than beating Utah and throwing maybe a USC? Like, that would change everything for the Cougars and how they feel about playing at home and the whole trajectory of the season. It's Absolutely. And the opportunities there – and. and- Everyone has an opportunity. And what I like more than scheduling is winning. We can agree on that. Scheduling sure. shouldn't be the highlight of the season. Okay, last one. Hashtag protect Lavelle's house, right, Spencer? Yes. There you go. Last one. Big deal, no deal. BYU women's hoops now a nine seed in Charlie Cream's latest bracketology. Big deal, absolutely. Uh, BYU's back in. They knock off number 13 on the road. They get a great RPI win, which they still use in women's hoops, which is stupid. But BYU uh, is in, according to Charlie Cream. I wish we had more people to kind of pull from, but Charlie's our guy. Charlie will join the show on Friday to discuss BYU's huge jump back into the bracket because they went from three spots out to firmly in. They're not one of the last four teams in in this bracket. They're just in. And guess who they're matched up against in the first round, Jerem? UCLA. Eight clap. (laughs) An eight-nine game. Oh, how I hope that happens. And then a rematch with Louisville. Remember a couple years ago, Mackenzie Morrison got elbowed in the face. Yeah. I, I went viral on Vine. Yeah, so do the that. million people that watch your Vine. <laughs> they all remember that cheap shot, too. I'm going to look up during the break. I think it was in the 300,000s. And it was loops. It's so fast. Anyway, whatever. Okay, coming up in the next segment, an unbeatable horse shot by a former BYU Cougar. Sports Center <laughs> tweeted about it. Yes, they did. And next, Utah Warriors GM and former Cougar Kimball Kerr in studio. How much of a BYU influence is there in Major League Rugby? He just looks like a rugby guy. He's a guy, former Coog. He? He's he back. looks like a rugby guy. He's got that beard. This is BYU Sports Nation. Big Deal, No Deal. Presented by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. Plus revenge. BYU lost this game by 19 in January. Go and beat the Dons. Like BYU St. Lost Mary's a... thing part two, right? Yeah, like exactly. lose big and then come yes. home and try and take your business. Protect the home court. Different BYU team right now. Question of the day. Who would you have on your all-time BYU basketball three-on-three team if you could take three players in you, their prime? You, me, and Greg. Oh, that's, this, this and is the Jason broadcast is the team? Sub. <laughs> Are we competing against other broadcasters? I'm... Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I want to take on your homies at KSL. Yeah. Ron and Rod, Jeremiah, Rod, we're Rod coming for Zundle, you. Rod Jeremiah Jensen, Matt Glade, yeah. We'll take those guys. <laughs> we'll take them out. At Ormsby Daniel on Instagram says, Danny Ainge, Jimmer Fredette, and Jackson Emery would be my ideal team because they'd have a balanced offense slash defense attack. Too my small. Fourth option would be Sean Bradley because of his size and defense. Yeah. Who's going to guard the you need, big man? You need a forward. You, yeah. gotta, you, you need, need to have a big. You can't guard Chosich on our teams. You can't guard him. Come on. 24-7 on social media using the hashtag BYUSN to respond. Joining us now on BYU Sports Nation, making his BYUSN debut as the general manager of the Utah Warriors, Kimball Care. Kimball, welcome What's up, to Kimble? Studio B. Me, guys. It's great to have you. Great to be here. You, you were a former Cougar player, and then you were assistant coach here. Now you're a general manager of a, a professional rugby team? Yeah. It's, well, Let's go. And you have a beard? <laughs> look, at, look at you, man. <laughs> a lot of changes in the last four or five years, but yeah, no, it's been fun. This is year two of the league, Major League Rugby, uh-huh. um, which is a success in and of itself because no domestic U.S. league had survived. Mm-hmm. We, saw, we see how hard it is. The AAF had to... Ask the Carolina Hurricanes owner to give them yeah. two hundred fifty million or whatever. So, yeah. congratulations on season two. How's it going so far? So far, so good. Yeah, we've grown from seven teams to nine teams uh, this year. We're going to grow from nine teams to thirteen teams next year. 
Uh, we added New York, Toronto. We're going to be adding D.C., Boston, Atlanta, and Dallas in 2020. So, And there's plenty of healthy conversations in other markets and geographies, so we're excited. What kind of following does rugby have in the United States right now? Well, it de- depends on you know how you look at it and how you how you kind of you know who you ask. But you know Nielsen put out a, a study recently that there's over 35 million, 40 million U.S. rugby fans in, in America. And when you think about that, you put it in context. There's four million people that live in New Zealand now. 3.999 million <laughs> like of them rugby. are rugby fans in New Zealand. All Johnny Linehan's friends. But yeah. when you look at the, the the market cap, when you're looking at United States versus New Zealand and some of these other big rugby playing countries from a commercial standpoint, there's basically what that says is there's an underserved market here and that we're, we're providing that product, that service. Yeah, and so, so far so good. Uh, one and one on the season for you guys. I know you played in uh, San Diego. The weather wasn't good in San Diego. Come on. Uh, yeah. But this was a tremendous mall we're seeing for a try on, on Sunday. There are eight former BYU players on the roster, which is kind of a fun connection. Yeah, What's... I actually counted nine. Maybe oh, you I, have nine. Yeah, oh, okay. Nine, Sorry. yeah. So, Even more. Yeah, better. exactly. Yeah. yeah, no, we got a good, we got a good uh, BYU following. And, I, you know, I don't want to play the, you know, bipartisan too much here, but we got some Utah You're guys too. You're on a BYU too. show. Yeah, I, I, I understand. <laughs> but uh, we've got plenty of, of really, you know, a lot of people that uh, BYU rugby fans are familiar with. Josh Whippy, Jared Whippy. Calvin Whiting, Matt Jensen, Ada Elkington, you know, some big Josh standouts Anderson's. that were all a part of our yeah. national championship runs that, that, that we had while I was here. So. so in terms of getting the best talent and competing against these leagues across the world, how has that challenge been for Major League, Major League Rugby, trying to keep guys from going back home or going back overseas and stay here in the United States? Well, it's tough. In fact, we found that this last year. If you recall, Paul C.K., former BYU football and rugby standout here, uh, he played for us last year. Uh, he was our captain. He was kind of our marquee player. And he did so well that he got a contract offer to go play in Europe. Now, you know, we're a fledgling and, and startup league. So, you know, remuneration in terms of what these players are being paid is significantly different from what they can potentially make in Europe. Uh, so good for him. We were, we were happy for him to have that opportunity. But, um, you know, there's plenty of really strong talent not only here locally, but domestically. And there's a, a lot of international interest from players that want to come to America and be a part of this this growing league. Yeah, there's a ton of different countries represented on the team, which is cool. And like mm-hmm. you said, Utah's always been a hotbed. You have Highland Rugby, of course. United kind of emerged right there. Mm-hmm. BYU and Utah. Um, so it, it's, it's awesome. So now uh, this league in year two, the team made the semifinals last year. Mm-hmm. I guess what are the goals and how do you feel about this group this season? Well, we want to make another playoff run, obviously. We think we've got the talent to do it. But it's 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 we're only two games in, and it's a sixteen game regular season, which that is significantly increased Signif- from what seven last it's year. It's almost basically double, you know, from what it was last year. So that's a big jump, and hopefully, you know, we have enough bodies when all is said and done that can get us <laughs> through the season. We had a lot of injuries last year. The Whippy brothers, you know, had some some uh, pretty devastating injuries as well. So they broke the same leg, like same the leg, same, same injuries, super same weird. type of it freak was so accident. Weird. Super yeah. weird. Yeah, really unfortunate for the two of them. But, but they're back. Josh is back. Jared's probably another month out. So we're excited to, to get both of them back. Jared, Josh looked pretty good in the San Diego game. So, you know, we're pretty excited about both of them being back in the mix. But you know, the key for us is staying healthy and getting these new players integrated and, and managing our combinations. And once we get there, we feel like we've got a pretty good team and it's going to be hard to beat. For any fence sitters that maybe haven't watched rugby but are thinking about it, what kind of product will they experience if they go and check out the Utah Warriors or any team in Major League Rugby for that matter? Well, I, I mean, it, it's it's when I was down here at BYU, I constantly be inviting people to come to games. And, the, you know, the, the common sentiment was is I didn't know really what was going on, but I really enjoyed it. I, I, I liked it. And it's because they saw a lot of the same things that they see in football, basketball, soccer, nonstop, you know, aerial, you know, spatial awareness skills. Um, but the really unique thing is that it's a, a perfect combination of all of those American sports. You know, you see the physicality, you see the tackling, you see the nonstop action that you see in soccer. You see a lot of the jumping and, and you know, the, the athleticism that goes along with, with uh, basketball. So, Two or three rules. Once you kind of understand some of the basics, make take a game or two, you're hooked. Just tweet at me. I'll, I'll explain. It. <laughs> and and, and uh, full disclosure, I call some of the games, Jared, and so I'm I'm yeah. happy to be involved. No, you're you're great. You got me involved in 2009. Yeah, we you know, sucked when you we, in. Yeah. We sucked you in. <laughs> we sucked Which was in. awesome. Let, we should mention your home opener is this Saturday. I guess tell mm-hmm. people about the matchup with Glendale. 
Uh, well, there's actually some interesting BYU storylines there. You know, you got Sean Davies. Former My BYU. old roommate. Yeah, you Love got Sean, Sean Davies, who's playing for Glendale. Uh, Johnny Lane, who played last year at BYU, who's playing with Glendale. Uh, so there's a couple little kind of unique storylines there, but Glendale is uh, a team coming out of the Denver area. They've they've been semi-professional for over a decade now, so they made a, a easy transition to the professionalism that we went through last year, and they were in the final last year, lost in the in the death of that championship game against Seattle, but they were essentially the team to beat last year, yep. and we think they're probably one of the top three teams, four teams in the, in the league this year as well. So it's a big game to start the season. Yeah, oh, for significant sure. challenge. And, and Sean's the starting scrum half, uh, Davis, on the national team for the U.S., Correct. which is awesome. Yeah. So he's doing great. Yeah. How are we supposed to distribute the BYU Sports Nation karma there's for this so, match? Yeah, there's so many guys right on both sides. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Kimball, you're in studio. We've got so more think, BYU guys yeah, on okay. our team. So right. Eight or nine, it. right? Yeah, uh, majority. Nine yeah. Majority yeah. rules. BYU guys, but we'll take the most. <laughs> you got it. Kimball, great to have you with us, man. Thanks, guys. Appreciate hey, thanks. it. Thanks. Coming up, a former Cougar issues a challenge to Steve Nash. What? Uh, and Cougars on the course in Hawaii. The whip. With all the details next, this is BYU Sports Nation. I want to see you in a lineup. I'll just lift you up. <laughs> Shout out to today's guest, Greg Rebel, the voice of the Cougars, who stumped me in trivia again, Jerem. Thanks, Greg. I would hope he'd be expected to win that. He, he's the stats guy. He, he's great. That's true. And Kimball Kerr of Utah Warriors Rugby, former BYU guy. Got that BYU guy. beard oh, yes, he does. four years. Yes, he does. You know who Since else has one that's uh, been uh, very prevalent on social media? Tanner Mangum. Yeah. Yeah, it's classic. The football. Oh, yeah, the growth. Look at me. I'm not here anymore. I'm not <laughs> jealous at all. If you missed any of the show, download the podcast. Go to <laughs> BYUSN.com and watch full episodes. I don't think Dennis Pitta has a beard, but maybe he does. We ran out of time for him. Let's whip does it. Does he have the scruff? It's Here's. time for the Cougar Whip Around. Golf. Women's golf took eighth place in the Rebel Beach Invitational, climbing four spots yesterday. Rose Huang led the way for the Cougars, shooting 12 over the men's team. Begins play today in Hawaii at the John A. Burns Intercollegiate. Volleyball. The women's team announced seven signees, highlighted by two Under Armour All-Americans in Morgan Bauer and Kate Grimmer. Swimming and diving. They begin competition at the MPSF Championships. That's the conference championships today in La Mirada, California. The Federation for Championships. The swimmers. Federation. What is this? Star Trek? Beat me up, Scotty. Pasadena for the divers. Last year, the men took third, women fourth. Today's rise and shout goes to Our Lady Ashley Hatch, BYU women's soccer alumnus, now competing alumna. at the highest level in the yeah, alumni. Sorry, alumna. Al- alumna, because yep. she is yep. a female. Alumnus yeah. for male. Yes. Alumni plural. Yes. There you go. You learn. Uh, she put on quite the horse shot yesterday. Yeah. Juggling the soccer ball and then kicks it over her head. No look. From beyond the free throw line and banks it off the glass in a church gym with a soccer yeah. ball. So good that it got noticed by hashtag SC Top 10 and they, sent out by Sports yeah, Center. Yeah, Sports Center sent this out, which was awesome. Also, that backboard's too small. It needs to be wider. Just FYI. That makes it even more impressive. Yeah. It's hard enough for those church ballers. But yeah, Ashley, very nice. She did, you tweeted about this, and then she did respond and said, it's because I have all that it's BYU, all the BYU Sports, Sports Nation, Nation karma. karma. So she remembers. Yes. Yeah, she's a pro soccer player. Awesome. National Women's Soccer League competing for uh, Washington in the, Washington, D.C. The, the spirit. The spirit. Yeah, the spirit. Our BYU Sports Nation karma reigns supreme. For in, in spite of our... One of our outstanding yeah. alumna. Very a- nice. Ashley Hatch. Our question of the day. Who would you have on your all-time BYU three-on-three basketball team, players in their prime? Let's go to Dick voice Nemelka, of Minson. the nation. This is the voice of the nation on BYU Sports Nation. And we might as well make it elite, Jerem. Our well, elite well, we'll see. voice of the day, presented by Sundance Mountain Resort, celebrating 50 years at Colonel underscore James 83 answers on Twitter. Jimmer? Jimmer and Jimmer. This is, is there a, really anyone this is, else? This is a two-way game. There is defense here. So I, I love one Jimmer. I may even love two Jimmers. But you need you need someone else to help. J- Four look, steals a now, game in the CBA. Now I do want to mention Jimmer was top ten in steals in BYU history. Okay, so he wasn't like the slouch that people make him out to be. He can defend. He just focused on offense. Come on. Conversation continues twenty four seven on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. For Jerem, I am Spencer. Remind me of the outstanding player for BYU Rugby that uh, has the last name of Sumption. Is it Ty- Kyle? Kyle. Kyle Sumption. Yeah. That's the guy I want to shout out today. That yeah. dude could ball. 
He Go played Cougs. for the Houston Sabercats last year. Now he's uh, rugby in New York. Rooney.